Welcome to another Café Rollist. Did we have one last week? I don't know. Time is a concept. It's all blurry in my head. I'm recovering from COVID. Anyway, I was just talking with my guest saying how oh, much it's good for me to have uh, those interactions. So today, and I have interaction with people across the world. Today, I've got someone from uh, the neighborhood of Calgary in Canada. Am I right, Alex? <laughs> Well, that was where I was born. I'm currently in Edmonton, uh, Canada. But yes, three hours away. It's it's not even, it's just a drive away. <laughs> 90% of what I know of, or maybe 50%, 50% of what I know of Canada comes from a movie called The Adventures of the Lost Stamp, uh, which is, was a child movie, which I need to cover on film studies one day. But children would travel through entering stamps and getting out of them so that's not weird at all and the other 50 percent of my knowledge of canada comes from uh, an album called uh mon oncle serge mon voyage au canada it's a french canadian album metal humor and mm. one of their songs is called the west edmonton mall and it's about being high <laughs> in the west edmonton mall called oh two stone God. Dans un centre d'achat, so two stone in a mall, uh, and I really people recommend to check it out. I will link it in the description. But uh, what are you about? <laughs> what are you doing in Edmonton, uh, Alex? Well, What's your I'm, deal? I'm... <laughs> well, I'm definitely not going to West Edmonton Mall. To get stones <laughs> <laughs> during COVID. I love that. That is like what everyone knows about Edmonton being West Edmonton Mall, as as you should. <laughs> um, and you uh well what's up during covid is that i am playing a lot of tabletop role playing games i'm also uh dabbling right now in the film world so oh. that has really changed a lot yeah i'm a filmmaker in addition to uh being like a very avid uh like rpg designer gm player because uh, across all these mediums it's all about storytelling it's about being able to tell a story and being able to interact and play in the story too I keep wondering how, first of all, I need to get you on films on a, one of our episodes of the RPG Academy Film Studies. I just released one recorded <laughs> with uh, Banana Shan and uh, Yvonne. Uh, by the way, I apologize to Yvonne. I, I, I don't know how to pronounce uh, her name uh, in, uh, in Chinese, in Mandarin. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's what's written on Twitter. But uh, yeah, uh, I should. I keep wondering, you know, about tabletop role-playing games and filmmaking and storytelling in entertainment uh, uh, overall. If you could write, if you could use sessions, improvised session of a system, or even you write the the basis of a script, and if you could use a, a gaming session and then polish it to make it a proper st script for for a movie, is that something <laughs> you ever considered doing? I, I mean, like, you know, uh, like, it's totally possible. If you look at, like, onwards, like, I mean, it wasn't like a, like a, like a session from a TTRPG into a movie. But if you look at it, it's almost like as if, like, it was a TTRPG session where someone goes on a mission and then they try to, like, have the stick and stone and magic in there. And so it's almost like the same thing. Like, I feel like any TTRPG can be created like into because I write scripts like you just need the conflict you need to have like what the objective and the desires of the players are and then you're good to go to make a film like it's very similar I think it could be done across any session um, because they're quite similar to like films and why we study and love films too is because there's like we're invested in the characters we love their stories and we want to see people succeed and fail so there's quite actually quite a lot of stuff being shot uh, in Canada even production which technically i guess the the uh, us productions so it's your dream to work on a cw show uh, in vancouver i mean maybe, maybe, i don't know that's that's like a really big dream it's one day maybe it'd be really cool if they like if any cw people are watching for sure call me up <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find me if anyone in vancouver wants to talk to me you know where to find me on twitter <laughs> If if anyone from CW is watching this show, they should call me too because I'd like to <laughs> bring Callum along too. Let's write films together, Callum. <laughs> so, what's your what's your routine like at the moment uh, under the uh, waving my arms at the world uh, situation? Uh, 
Do you work from home? Right. Do you study? Uh, do you wake up all early or late? Uh, do you leave at night? Uh, Oh yeah, it's it's so different. Like I, I work from home now. I'm like in the day, I'm like a policy analyst, a government bureaucrat by the day. Um, and so it's almost like a, a nine to five that I have regularly. And then I and uh and then I play like my TTRPGs and my filmmaking sort of at night in, in those meetings. Um and so the world's so changed because like it used to take like I used to do two hours of commuting. I would take one hour on the train to go downtown and then an hour, another hour coming back. And so like I have gained time. I am living my best life right now. I know like this situation for sure, like COVID has been affecting a lot of people's lives negatively. Uh, but for myself, I, I feel that I'm actually not so tired anymore from the commute. I'm able to like work from home. So I'm able to take breaks. My fridge is only, only like five minutes away. I'm in my bedroom <laughs> filming right now. Oh, um, you, you got and, a very large house, five minutes. That's quite far away for a fridge from a bedroom. <laughs> it's true. Five minutes away for like fridge. I guess I have to like keep walking. No, it's maybe more than like five seconds. <laughs> my bridge. I just need to ride my golf cart to go to my fridge, which is on the other <laughs> wing of my mansion. <laughs> <laughs> oh I wish oh my goodness yeah so yeah I wake up I wake up early because I, I really want to like seize the day and see what's happening um and I'm, I'm there's been such like, a big push for diversity in a lot of like uh media and grants and and like opportunities online uh for like TTRPGs that I, I am super tired but I am very happy and fulfilled because I can create more Asian representation in the content that I'm creating in the film um, media and play. Well, jump. Let's jump into that uh, Asian representation. So, one of the things which you already published is on the DMs Guild, and that's the Great Zodiac Race. Uh, what is that about? Is that is that with is it related to? Because when I read Zodiac, th that's a French title of Sensei. It's the Knights of the Zodiac. So, is it related to that oh. in any way? Uh, I assume maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Knights of the Can you tell me about the Knights of the Zodiac? Are, like, are they like the astrology? It's Senseiya, and uh, you got the uh, bronze uh, uh, knights, and they are the Chinese astrology. So you've got the, I think it's just Chinese astrology. You got the monkey, you got the tiger, but the, the most famous one are, is the dragon, the Pegasus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so yeah, so like uh, I was disappointed to find out. I think I'm monkey in Chinese horoscope, but uh, yeah, we we let, let's talk about the zo great zodiac race, not sensei. No, Callum, you're a monkey. I'm a monkey too. <laughs> My brother is a tiger, which is much cooler. I find. Uh, no, monkeys are are so cool. We're intelligent, but stubborn and hot tempered. But <laughs> um, no, I think I think you're right. I mean, there's some zodiac animals where I'm just like, do I want to be a rat? <laughs> Um, but no, I think it, it, any Zodiac animal is actually really cool. Um, and so it's exactly sort of like what you were talking about, the like touchstone you were talking about is that um, the great, there is a legend called the great race um, that uh, really helped determine the Chinese um, lunar calendar or like the lunar calendar itself and the Chinese Zodiac. And so this myth tells like uh, every, like of this Chinese mythology, this myth that uh, these 12 animals determine time. And so, um, yeah, like it's a, it's a 12 year cycle every year there. It, the first is the rat. Um, and then it's ox. Uh, then it's, I'm trying to reach my brain. It's a very specific order. Uh, and then it is a tiger, uh, rabbit dragon. Um, and then it is, uh, <clears throat> I, I believe it's, uh, sh uh, monkey, uh, sheep, uh um sheep r rabbit or sorry, sheep rooster monkey and then it is oh, i'm getting it all wrong i know everyone's gonna laugh at me once i read it what should i watch so it again th there's or a snake. swan so the this sw no swan there's no swan cygnus there's no swan i know oh. we don't have swans we have cranes <laughs> Um, yeah, and then like pig and dog. Mm, I butch butchered it. And I, it was only like a couple months ago that I wrote it. Um, 
I, I actually was writing it for the RPG Writers Workshop. It was like, um, if, it's this really excellent program that really helps you like move through if you want to write uh, a TTRPG adventure for the first time. And their, uh, their adventure was like D&D first. Um, they 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 have like the sponsorship from DSM M Guild, and so a and D isn't my favorite system, but I I mean I've grown up with it. I played it for like ten years, um, and so it's what I've grown up with. And so um, I in in D and D um, there like uh, if you've ever played D and D, there it, like the settings for the Orient and the East East Asia is really really poorly done. It's really uh, you, written through like a white lens and so um, it's not like authentic or really accessible to Asian uh, folks and so I really wanted to create an adventure um, that allowed people to be seen to be heard and um, to like celebrate our like our authentic culture so I really wanted to bring like a story that I love um, and that I like learned about when I was a kid. So what's the premise really where do the adventurers start is it is it a setting? Is it an adventure? Can if I have a group we're playing in the Forgotten Realms, could we run it there? Or is it do you need to create characters which are specific to this adventure because of what it requires? Uh, not at all. You know, like this, this you could like you could be running like a campaign in like the Forbidden Lands and then get yourself like yeeted over to like this this like world of like China um, and you can keep all your characters the same um, and I've created these mechanisms where um, you are actually going through this legend and you're rewriting this legend with your friends you can recreate and retell the story of the great zodiac of the great race and um, and all your characters would become the zodiac animals and so you could choose uh, Callum for your character in this game if you wanted to be the tiger you can I created mechanisms in this game where it would give you um in D, &D like there is like a really great section for traits and flaws and ideals and bonds and so I've uh and so that's very similar to like uh like the Chinese zodiac animals who also have like uh, like trait these like positive traits these negative traits these ideals these bonds I just like translated them over to this character sheet which is really cool um, and uh, you could and then um, you go through very specific settings um, you go through like the the Zhangjie uh, forest which is uh, have you watched the avatar yes like, like James Cameron avatar yeah oh. like <laughs> uh, you notice <laughs> oh, I was thinking the airbender, yeah, but like yes, yes, to both counts. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender is also really great. I love them. Um, and so the Avatar, like, you can see that there's, like, huge, like, beautiful sandstone pillars. Um, and this place actually exists, like, this Pandora actually exists in China. And it's the Zhangjie Jie, uh, forest um, in China. And it's, and you can, like, move your characters through that. I also include like the Yangtze River where it's a huge expansive like um like huge river um of like maybe like 15 15 17,000 feet I think. Um really huge. Uh and uh it, it, you get to interact with like um, villagers and and rice terraces like you really go through like this authentic Chinese areas that like been taken from like actual Chinese um, like geography because I really wanted people to move through actual it's not like it's it's like these areas uh, inspired fantasy that is my alarm it's fine <laughs> so does that mean uh, is uh, the play experience sort of structured in 12 acts, one for each uh, of those Zodiac, or are things sort of more meshing in a, in a different manner? Um, no, it's, it's just, it's done in three acts, actually. Um, not 12 acts, you don't go through each Zodiac animal. Um, you just have like a selection of animals that you could play. Um, and so it's almost like uh, if you were in like PBTA, uh, play uh, playing like Powered by the Apocalypse, you have these characters uh, that you could choose to play. Um, and so like if I, for example, chose a character uh, like the like a dwarf, 
uh, character. And I was like, I want to be a tiger. You can like decide for your dwarf character if like how much you want it to transform into the tiger, take on like the abilities. You also get special abilities with each character. Um, and uh, and one use like special abilities uh, that have been imbued to you with like a talisman um, because like the, the premise the start of the story is that you're all adventurers trying to find this this like scroll in a cave um this like really this hidden scroll in this cave and like this in, in a cave of a thousand buddhas and you go through and then you get sucked into the story and the only way to escape is that you have to like re like go through the whole entire like legend you have to relive the legend and see like how you recreate this legend with your friends no it's uh <laughs> people could we could have bingo cards for the release because i'm gonna bring up a, a role-playing game i bring up all the time <laughs> uh, but what you describe living out a legend engaging with a tradition especially uh, on a quest to find a scroll uh, now I'm tempted to grab a, a copy of The Great Zodiac Race and see if I could port that to another game called Nephilim, which is a French contemporary occult game, but in which okay. you play immortal beings, ethereal beings who incarnate themselves in human bodies, but they, they always seek out uh, some kind of wisdom to engage with the past, with history, with legends, with... Um, common folklore and this sort of things uh, in a way to engage with imagination in the world. So I'd be very tempted to, to see if I could take the great Zodiac race and play it out as a Nephilim uh, adventure in which it would be after this scroll and then go through all those different settings because that's something which is very common in Nephilim. You go through places called Agatha, which probably has uh, some Asian uh, origin as well, uh, which are... Uh, Imaginary, but not quite imaginary, because they're they're real and they still influence people. But you you travel from one world to another, to one setting to one another, and it's all about engaging with yeah uh, legend and history. Even as players, you find out in a rather clumsy way, but still it's really encouraging you to go further and and research uh, topics like that. Uh, it, I don't know. Is that mm -hmm. something you could imagine? I don't know if you. You might be more familiar with something like Changeling. Could you imagine someone play uh, the Great Zodiac Race using Changeling? Yeah, I mean, like, um, with this being like a legend and like a theme, um, I originally wanted to create this story actually with like using Powered by the Apocalypse because I thought it would be really cool to have each character be asymmetrical characters um, and to go through this legend. And you know what? Like, I think... Yeah, Callum, if you want me to ever, like, if you want to ever, ever gather your friends and, like, I can play, like, uh, GM you through this game. I think, like, it could, it could, like, the legend itself, I think that's the, the beauty is that it's really a theme um, that could be probably, like, uh like re reskinned into an, like another system and you could have similar play i think so um because it's it's you're really just playing through the like this like culture cultural mythology where um you're like learning about what is the great uh what is the great race and how these chinese zodiac animals came to be like how how was it that we determined these 12 animals like why did why did the chinese people choose rat ox rabbit uh dragon snake horse sheep monkey rooster dog and pig why didn't they choose the the swan <laughs> so you mentioned that uh not exactly all 12 of those signs were were involved uh, would you consider writing sequels to it uh, to to cover all of them maybe in uh, in three parts or something like that Ooh, uh, sequel. I like that'd be very Am I kind of running a consultant service here. I think I should get paid for all these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. You know, um I don't I don't know if you've ever done with your creative work. Um I'm really happy with where the the great zodiac race is right now. I'm I'm thinking of actually uh, I actually like I'm in another a mentorship program called the tabletop mentorship program great program for like people who want to uh, who are like in board games and TTRPGs who want to like be matched up with mentors um, who are in specific fields and I want to do art illustration, um, but sometimes you have to like for me like sometimes my projects are done sometimes like I'm, I'm just like oh like how much do I want to talk about this zodiac race and then like move on to another project.
Yeah, of it's course. I mean, it makes, yeah. makes total sense. I'm I'm hopeful in a couple of weeks to finally release a version of the game I'm developing. And I already have ideas for for the next game. So on one hand, <laughs> I'm very keen to publish my game and I still got work to hire a graphic designer and have an artist. But in terms of writing, uh, I definitely want to move on to to the next bit. And but yeah, but I, I it's it's like any creative endeavor. You know, uh, in my work, I'm I'm an architect. Uh, have a drink, everyone listening. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you you have something, and you need to get away from it. And eventually, you will come back. But you need to get away uh, first because if you stick around, you just you you yeah you sort of get yourself sick of your of that yeah. specific project i i guess it, un, unless you have a very specific other stuff but that's a good segue for your next or already ongoing project you send me a few pictures and i mean what do you want to talk about first the cyberpunk game or the um i always forget what they called in english uh read your own adventure project yeah yeah, we can talk about the cyberpunk one first. It's super in prototype. Also, for everyone like watching out there, play Ka Callum's game. It's so good. Like I, <laughs> it is like a beautiful game, and I do not like inventorying at all in in D and D. So this game will change it all for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, such a good experience. Um, yeah, um, it was a great group. Yeah, so also, like, uh, just just for a second on that. Uh, I mean, Alex Roberts and uh, B Zelda, uh, that's, that's top-notch gamers there. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love them. I'm also like a, like a pro GM with B Zelda uh, with like Magpie Games. Um, so much, like so much plugging. I need to like get a sponsor. It's a Canadian connection, of course. <laughs> There is so many, so much connection. Everyone in the TTRPG world, it's so small. You will like find out like everyone. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, um, if you've watched a lot of like cyberpunk movies, such as like Ghost in the Shell or like, or like Blade Runner, for example, there's like a lot of like when I first watched Blade Runner, I saw like an aesthetic of like a like I think it was a geisha on like a T on like a building. Um, and I was just like, okay, Asian aesthetics. But like if you keep watching, you're just like, where are the Asian people? Like there's no Asian people there. Um, and so like I think it's very interesting that like Asian aesthetics and cultural aesthetics gets um sort of like borrowed all the time and taken. Um, and reappropriated to like because it seems cool like whenever you imagine the future in cyberpunk you always see like oh it's going to be asian but they're like but then you're like you're just like where are the asian people um it's, it's it, interesting yeah. this kind of this 80s i guess well it's probably older but i think it was something at its height in the 80s the the sort of western scare that industries were taken over but especially by japanese corporations and this sort of things but while those were often featured uh lead characters were pretty much never uh, uh asian uh, actors themselves or characters yeah like it makes you wonder like who are they prioritizing i always saw it was like a, a broody white man who was like who was the lead um and it never really made sense to me so like there was this like recent jam um for like asian cyberpunk i've never like i've never i've thought about it and i was like what does asian asian cyberpunk look like um and so i attempted to like write a choose your own adventure with some like um me mechanisms where you can like uh ask like create the world around you but um you were like definitely playing an asian person in this like very technologically advanced world and i really want and i i, I really love black mirror um and so i want to incorporate those themes in there so um it's it's called like escape from neo millennia um and it's, it's just an adventure where uh, you wake up and you're just like where am i who am i um sort of like theme and then you like try to discover what is happening in this world as you explore it um, and I love choose your own adventure books. Um, I always grew up like with them and I really wanted to write um, my own. And so all the projects I've sort of been doing have been ones that like have been, have inspired, been inspired by, by my like childhood and like all, all these like cultural areas around me and so things that I, I wasn't seeing, um, in, in the markets. 
So that's interesting. So you you went to uh, the place of Asian culture into cyberpunk, but uh, did you jump straight with sort of your wherever you were in terms of uh, baggage and perception uh, as as yourself, or did you make some research and go to because uh, as a teenager I was very deep into I guess that yeah that fits as a cyberpunk. Uh, it was kind of a high watermark for Japanimation in the French-speaking world for, for a number of reasons. It started very early mm -hmm. uh, with co-production and imports uh, with child shows like Sherlock Hound, uh Around the World in 80 Days. But uh, when I was a teenager, my generation, which grew up on also Candy, uh, Grandizer, and later Senseiya, and uh, Dragon Ball, not Dragon Ball Z, but when my generation became teenagers, that's when you had a big wave of interest into manga itself. So cyberpunk mm -hmm. was very present with names like Mazamune Shiro, uh, Yukito Kishiro, or um, the movies by, uh, uh, what's, he, what's his name, Mamoru Oshid, you know, the two Pat Labors, and, and then uh, Ghost in the Shell, and of course Akira as well. Uh, are there things you went back to, or did you jump straight with with your own views on of the the topic? Mm, I guess I was like a little bit influenced by like like everything. I guess like you're you're like you, for sure like there's a lot of like manga out there and animes that have like their own cyberpunk like you know Full Metal Alchemist, Ch uh, uh, Showbit Spy Clamp. Um, and so like Ghost in the Shell, um, which uh, have like, they, these are Asian people creating their own cyberpunk worlds. And so for sure, like, I definitely remembered like show bits and like how you have, like, that's like, I drew a lot of uh, like reference from that, from that area, because I was just like, what, what would the world look like um, with robots? Um, and these high, these high tech advances, but these are like, these are worlds created by Asian people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, in living in North America, like when, uh, like outside of like anime and manga, like what are people watching for cyberpunk? Um, and, uh, like for me, like a lot of, like what I also took from was Black Mirror. I really love how Black Mirror creates this, like, like this dirty gritty world of like what could go wrong in technology so those are like my touch points for what I wanted to create in this like Asian cyberpunk like re reclaiming back um what uh like the western world thought of like cyberpunk taking like these Asian aesthetics and actually creating more um of these aesthetics from like an Asian person so as you are uh into film filmmaking yourself uh uh, Black Mirror did Bandersnatch and you writing a uh, radio and adventure, cyberpunk adventure. Uh, is that a project you could imagine shooting cool. in some fashion or animating and making it uh, an interactive video experience? Oh my gosh, Callum, you're putting ideas in my head now. I need to like fly to London. And <laughs> I then need we a commission on one of that. <laughs> It's it's a it's it's a good connection. I didn't make the connection before. You know what? Like that's so cool. And I was I actually was like at, uh, like a couple of weeks ago, um, playing around with like this interaction. Like I played Bandersnatch for hours on end because I wanted to find out every single connect, like every ending, like that. I was that person who was like very obsessed with like go, like memorizing all the paths that like were going down. And so like I think that'd be so cool. I think I would love to like film. The, like the sequences and have people interact and do like a like a Asian cyberpunk world where people like decide yeah I think that'd be so cool that might be my next project Callum <laughs> I'm putting on on the screen the, the picture you send me of your notes for your uh pick your your path adventure uh what were the notes you send me the the cyberpunk one or another one mm -hmm. and, and what was your your process to develop that yeah um yeah as you probably see on screen wherever it's pointing um yeah like you know to be creative and it, it's like like welcome to my brain it's so messy um That's so like kind of scary uh, to be honest i got a picture in front of me 
Um, but if you look at it, like you can see like where I was trying to branch off to all these like different adventure, like these adventure points. Like if you choose this one, you go here. And so it's all this like this again, branching narratives. And I had to like make sense of it. And so there's nothing like uh, putting, you know, down uh, pen and paper to paper and, and writing this out because like I was having such a trouble sometime. I know there's like programs out there on the and like on the website that you could like help do this. But for me, I just needed to like vis like actually visit like visually see it all uh, down. And so like I just, you know, I just took a piece of paper and I was just like, where do I want people to pick these choices? And then you can go here. And then I wrote down the name, the numbers, and then I ended up creating like a 40 page, like um, choose your own adventure out of that. So choose your own adventure, the, for instance, the fighting fantasy books, they also include often, I'm not the most familiar with the format, but uh, unlike Bandersnatch, they also include uh, elements of gaming and randomizers and uh, uh, competitiveness stuff it's not just choices it's also you, you will be more or less likely to to pass some actions and you will also have a, <clears throat> uh what's it called uh yeah maybe you have even the xp and this sort of things uh did you include it, some aspects of that as well or is it strictly you yeah. choose your path no, absolutely. Like, I love that you brought up fighting fantasy. We have so much to talk about, Callum. Um, <laughs> I love fighting fantasy books. Those are also for my childhood. Man, I had such a good childhood um, in, like, the terms of fantasy. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like, I mean, fighting fantasy, you have, like, this character who, like, you have, like, stats, you have skill, luck, and stamina. For myself, I, I sort of made, like, a, you know, um, a heart, mind, um, you have like HP as in electrical juices. Um, and so you have uh, like, you have like uh, modifiers, like uh, you can have like a, uh, almost like PBTA where like you kind of have like a zero, a minus one, a one, and then you roll 2d6 to go through this world. And if you fail, you can go through like a time loop. So I actually created something from Bandersnatch and like the video game, like Life is Strange, where like you have a rewind button. So throughout this adventure, you actually have like a couple of rewind buttons um, if you like make a really poor decision. Um, and my friends then said that I was too kind. <laughs> <laughs> um to players because i should just let them die a grisly death and detail everything that happened to you and i'm like oh maybe uh so like i it's still like in the in the early early prototypes um i got my friends to read it and they like they really like the concepts it's, it's really cool how I, I really wanted to not just like make choices but also influence like if you rolled a below a six uh then this bad thing happens to you a seven to nine like something like so, like a mix of results happen and then 10 plus it, like you succeed and and everything you wanted in life um but then you get to see what choices you you did based on like how like the the items you picked up or the skills you improved throughout this game so it evolves with you oh and and this game is your is it your ongoing project what what stage is it is it uh ready to for can people acquire it somewhere or is it uh, upcoming? When is it going to be released? Uh, how far are you in the development? Oh yeah, I mean, like I I had to publish it, so it's part of like the like the Asian Cyberpunk Jam, I believe, um, and it's super early access, like super super like you can download it and read it and like, um, and it like it's all my like brain ideas there. It's on my itch, um, which is like sour worm. Um, uh, with a Y for the for the worm. I'll include um, the link in the description of the episode, so easy to find. And I will add my sure. tag, so maybe I can have a cut of that sweet, sweet itch money. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so yeah, it's it's um, super yeah, it's super early access, and I would love people to like comment and tell me how it can make it better. Um, Cause play testing is so important um, as you probably know, Callum um, to make like a better game. And so at one point, yeah, it's my current project. Um, it's, I have like a million projects uh, on the go. And so it's just like one of many for sure. Well, well we still got a bit of time. Uh, what, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, another project or something else? <laughs> yeah, we could talk about like another project that I care about a lot too. Um, which is like 
uh, again with the tabletop mentorship program um i'm writing i really i'm uh, designing a game that like leads people through chinese ghost stories um again like i really love chinese legends stories myths and so uh like for this one i wanted to make a horror game because i run a lot of, so like surprisingly i run a lot of, like i love bluebeard's bride that's like one of my favorite games out there but like for i don't watch horror movies because then my imagination is so rife i can't go to sleep <laughs> So is it, because horror, it's a very wide, uh, you know, field. Uh, today, I was reading a rather interesting thread on Twitter about uh, Japanese horror movies and how uh, the characters are powerless to whatever they, they confronted to. But then you've got Detective D, you've got Chinese ghost stories. They, they are in a rather different vein. So what is sort of the vein for uh, your own ghost stories? Are they more Chinese? And oh, what, what, oh, that, oh does that color uh, that experience? Yeah, I've been like reading a couple of ghost stories and I haven't uh, really like committed to like which one I want to move people through or like if there's a couple, but I guess like which, like how, like how the Chinese language sort of does it is that like ghosts like ghosts are very like ominous um and how we've like sort of incorporated in this language is that like it sort of represents like a fear of the unknown and so um in our language uh like for something like if something's like unlucky or misfortunate we sort of add like the word ghost to it because it's something that we don't know is something uncertain and so like there's a lot of ghosts in um, like Chinese culture, like you have different kinds of ghosts too, um, not just like one kind of ghost. Um, and uh, yeah, they like really do represent um, sort of like they have humanistic characteristics. You could like interact with these ghosts, uh, but like they sort of represent like people who like have like died in like a really like uh, grisly way and their spirit hasn't passed like um, I remember like my parents telling me these ghost stories like when I was a kid so that I wouldn't do like a lot of like a, like a lot of folk stories like um, they tell me like if you do this um, this like bad thing will happen and you'll turn into a ghost and you don't want to you just don't want to be a ghost like just moving around this world um and so it's very interesting because i think it holds a lot of fear and uh uncertainty for people and so i think that makes it a little different um so i'm really excited to actually like bring in this like interpretation of what ghosts are to like chinese people um into this like uh into this adventure and see uh if i can bring like one of my board game one of my favorite board games is Betrayal um, on House on the Hill. And so I really want to bring some of those me mechanisms into this game. Reminds me actually that uh, we need to book, uh, I don't remember if it's you or B who promised a 12 candles game. Uh, I really want to. Oh yeah, that. I think it's B. Uh, we B need to make promised that 10 candles. That would be really cool. Great. Uh, uh... Yeah, so... Uh... Beyond Betrayal, are there other games which inspired you this experience? Do, does that mean it will be somewhat board gamey, or uh, do you still take it more into a narrative uh, direction? And how? It's true. I'm, I mean, like, I think I don't know. Oh, it's so hard. Like, what is like? What's the difference between a TTRPG and a board game? I guess, yeah, like, especially you yeah. know, we had a couple guests. We had uh, uh, um, what. Uh, I don't remember his first name, uh, Pet Petrusha, uh, who was telling about uh, Rest in Pieces, which you play with the Jenga Tower. Uh, you played Paris Gondo, which has got this card exchange mechanics. Uh, it's kind of, uh, and you got all the For the Queen games uh, happening at the moment. There's a very interesting, blurry uh situation taking place between card games board games and role-playing games at the moment and interestingly enough it's not even happening i find uh where you would think it's not happening between the tactical dungeon crawling heavy games like dnd fourth and war games no it's happening between narrative games and story games slash party games and so on it's uh, i find it fascinating what's going on there yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's so hard nowadays because, like, mm, 
because like uh, yeah like you were saying like every like what I thought was like originally a board game like these moving pieces these cards these tokens um can be used in a TTRPG and I guess like um or well for tabletop role-playing games I think I think what really differentiates it is that like in in board games you usually don't have like a person or like a couple people sort of like telling a story and not knowing what happens you sort of have mechanisms in the board game that helps you um like tell that story and like there's a very loose theme sometimes but in like tabletop are uh, like rpgs they really ask you to like stretch your imagination and you can have a gm who like decides the outcomes um and or like you can have a gm list game where like several people collaborate and like tell the story together so it's very interesting like what like the the line between board games and ttrpgs and how they like blur a little bit um and so for like my ghost <laughs> for my game um i sort of came out as a as like i wanted to create a portfolio piece like i'm really happy with like the great zodiac race if you look at the cover it tells you the whole entire adventure um in on, on the cover if you look very closely at it um and for this one i wanted to create i wanted to increase my digital illustration skills i want to be like a one person band in like everything i do i want to write design um and like illustrate an adventure and this is my time to do it um and so i really just wanted to create a game almost like uh we've talked about like brindlewood bay i wanted to make like a little bit mysterious uh and like maybe collect clues, maybe stab someone in the back, have a hidden identity. There's so many mechanisms I want to sort of include in this game that like I want, but um, the tabletop mentorship program sort of ends this round in April. And so I'm trying to give myself like, a month time to like, just like put this game out. So you designed the cover of uh, the Great Zodiac Race yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing. Because yeah, I painted it. Looked like a, something you would pull out out of a, I don't know, a historical collection or archive and uh, you would have purchased the copyrights for it. It looks, uh, yeah, it, it it's really, um, pretty reminds of uh, traditional drawings. It's quite impressive in for digital art, I find. Thank you. No, well, I mean, like the, this cover that I created, The Great Zodiac Race, took me seven hours to paint. Um, so it's actually, you could see that it's actually like, I, I just painted the cover with acrylics. Um, oh, amazing! And yeah, and so like if you look at like look at the cover, um, it, like you can see like the order. So like why I was like struggling with the order initially was that I was like looking at this like very small picture, um, and so like you can see that it's like the rat and and how the rat uh, came onto this the uh, won the race first was that it rode the ox's back. So I I drew that, and so you can see that the snake scares the horse because the snake was hiding in the in the in the like the hoof. Um, you can see that like the sheep, the rooster, and the monkey are together in like one of the frames because they all travel together by raft um, and tiger dog and pig are all alone because they all did it uh, with their own abilities and and then with uh with the dragon and rabbit a dragon helped uh rabbit by like blowing onto the log that rabbit had that that as they all had to cross a river in order to win the race um and so i i and and they're all situated in like the Fook sign, the fortune sign, because there was this like really beautiful scroll that I owned by Ren Yude um, that has like the animals in a similar position, but I, I rearranged them all um, to tell like my story of the great Zodiac race. That, that's re I really need to try to do something Nephilim with that because the, this sort of, you got an image and you've got a, a story you can read within the image and you got also an allegorical layer that's yeah that's a that's the kind of thing i really dig in uh, in nephilim which is more western european culture based but it's like these these old paintings and you look at it and it's like just a a cup of fruit with a, a clamshell and and maybe a dagger and you look at this painting and you're like okay that's a knight technical study that the painter did but then you have someone knowledgeable or you read about it and you find out now the dagger represents a historical event that happened this year and the pomegranate represent that thing and this fruit which is <laughs> yes. doing this and then you got a skull and the skull means that 
everybody dies even if you're a king and you, you got all those symbols <laughs> and the stories you can find out about and uh, you, you're trying to navigate in the uh, film the, the game yeah I'm a, I'm a big fan of symbolism and layers just like you said like I I really wanted to like when I create art I want I it's not just like at the face value I wanted to like tell the entire story also of like my D, &D adventure like you see you'll if you look really closely there's like a sword there's like arrows there's like a bamboo like shoots there's like um there's like clouds and and rafts in there because like you're also moving through that in this adventure so like yeah that's um and I wanted to make it special it's also based off like um traditional Chinese paper cuttings um so like like when I create something, I, I I like give it so much thought because I really want to like honor like my cultural like background and like significance uh, in in this myth. And even like you again, art can a picture says a thousand words, and this uh, cover definitely says a thousand words as well. Amazing, I, you know. Again, going back to filmmaking, uh, that that's something I also love with movies when there's some kind of subtext. And it doesn't need to be overt. It doesn't even need to be actually there. Maybe it's subconscious <laughs> from the creator, or maybe it's just something happening. But uh, yeah, sometimes that, that's what I, I miss with some movies when you don't have this this subtext which you could read through. I mean, the classic, well, or more obvious one, like the Night of the Living Dead zombie movies, and you start... Mm -hmm taking the zombies as an allegory for something else uh, is the, the kind of thing uh, I, I, really, I really love. Uh, is it something you consider when you are... You, I think on top of all, everything you, you're describing in gaming, do you also write scripts at the moment? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm currently like in two film projects. Um, currently, I'm writing a script called Myth of the Rabbit God, which like explores um, so, sort of like Chinese, like Chinese desire, sensuality through uh, another myth, um, and, uh, coffee to the people, which is a documentary looking at like how we can make a more sustainable coffee industry. Um, and looking at like, a, a coffee, a local coffee shop and how they're like increasing it for like queer trans people, uh, black indigenous and people of color to make it more accessible as a community. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a script writer, a director, producer, editor, like I, like, because the film's community is so small in Edmonton, you have to have, like, you have to wear all these hats um, in order to, like, create these projects and make them to life and make sure that my vision uh, gets properly, like, out there. So yeah, like, um, I think, I think when writing, it's so important that, like, um, you consider that, like, the, like um, it's not just like that dialogue or that setting that people will see that will also like interpret like what does that actually mean people will actually try to find patterns in everything that you do and so um yeah like um I that's that's a lot of filmmaking is trying to like convey that message but how hard are you hitting people over the head with that message and or can you get people to like be like oh I see that like that those are like the connections that the filmmaker is trying to make and are you actually as smart as you think <laughs> Some, sometimes <laughs> in the movie, like oh, this movie is smart is it though is it though love keeps the, <laughs> the universe together I'm not sure Mr. Nolan I'm not, I'm not convinced uh, as a closer question, um, I was wondering what would be your, let's say you, you got your Netflix show or you got your, your movie budget and you could adapt, uh, you create a new IP for mass entertainment, but your, your constraint is that you're going to have to use a uh, tabletop role-playing IP. What tabletop would you like to... Uh, write and direct uh, into a, a feature length movie or on an ongoing TV show? Oh, this is such a cool question, Callum. Um, oh man, what IP, what tabletop IP would I take into a movie? Um, oh, this is so hard. There's so many good <laughs> ones too. There's ah, High Hand, Brindlewood Bear, Blades in the Dark, Changeling. Change like oh my god there's so many fame movies already you know like it's so funny like hmm 
Uh, this is really hard for me to tell. Um, Cause like you, there's so many movies already. Um, you know, honestly, I would really love um, for Bluebeard's Bride to actually be a movie. Oh, that could <laughs> Have be you cool, played that yeah. Movie? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess like it's it's my default because it's a fairy tale already, but like I would just love to see like people choosing and and again, like if I could do the cyberpunk Asian one in Netflix, that would be really cool. But like, can you imagine if like you were like the bride and then you had to choose like rooms? Um, you would be like, which room do I want to choose? And then like interact with the horror that way. Very that would be so cool. So who who would you cast in there? Who's the blue beard and uh, who are the brides? Oh man. I guess you have I don't know if it would be too grim to have several lives in the game if you fail you play another bride. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. I don't know if you can. I think you just like accept your fate <laughs> in the end. Um and then you can try it again as a different bride, I suppose. Who would I cast? Who would be like who would I cast as a blue beard? I mean, um oh, um <laughs> who would be like i don't know Callum. it's so Aquafina? <laughs> that would be interesting yeah that would be super <laughs> interesting if i had like my my asian cast going um <laughs> um i would love to have like um who's that guy in crazy rich asians um i think his name is like henry uh uh henry, let me google that Golding, Henry Golding as like Bluebeard's Bride and then like have like maybe uh, Constant Wu like do a Crazy Rich Asians again but like make it Bluebeard's Bride in horror. Oh wow. Oh yeah, that's, I think there the, the would be definitely mass appeal behind that. Uh, by by the cast of Crazy Rich Asian taking you in a brand new direction. Horror. <laughs> Wouldn't that be wild? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you get the whole cast, and somehow you fit them uh, in the in the story, and you put them in uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast style French medieval attire. You know you. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? But also, like, can you imagine if it was like Emma Watson, and then like whoever played the Beast in Beauty and the Beast at, for the Bluebeard's Bride? That would be also very interesting. I would, would watch it be, that. Though? I thought everybody hated that movie. I mean, Emma Watson being a British actor in a French movie, in like a French movie, didn't really make sense. Um, but well, you uh, know, <laughs> so we we used to her that. Her accent was very off. <laughs> and Asian representation, uh, for sure, there's big shortcomings, but French representation uh, isn't that impressive either. You know, I I like it'd be very interesting if it was like queer. Like, um, I recently watched like Portrait of a Fire of a uh, a Lady on Fire, and oh. that was really well done. Yeah, that could um, be cool. So that would be really cool if it was like a sort of like a a queer twist. Um, I mean, like I'm really I'm tired of queer people dying on screen all the time, but I think uh, it would be very interesting as well. I think like uh yeah like i i love talking to creatives like yourself because then i get all these ideas and we bounce off them and i'm like oh my gosh i need to fly to london right now and chat to you about all these ideas <laughs> well uh my fees are very modest i just charge 20 pounds per hour uh, we can work out things uh in u.s dollar canadian dollars uh, if you if you wish so and uh yeah and speaking of which uh, your consultancy session is come with Cafe Release is coming slowly to an end. We are almost at the one hour mark. Is there one last thing you want to to discuss about? Um, I I think I think you know uh, this is just like a shout out to like any other like a Asian POC queer folks out there. Um, if you like, you also know, you don't have to be CW or Vancouver. You could also find me on Twitter at Daredevil Alex. And uh, if you have an idea, we can collaborate. Um, I think we can create something beautiful. Amazing. Well, uh, I will put links to all of that in the description. So it's easy for everyone to find. Uh, please, people, uh, if you enjoyed this, leave it a like, leave it some comments. And if you leave comments uh, for Alex, uh, I will uh, let Alex know that you did. So uh, we can all reply uh, in there. It helps the video being more visible. 
uh, subscribe, follow on Twitch, and this, oh, was there anyone in the chat room? I don't think we had people in the chat room today. Uh, they didn't post anyway. But uh, yeah, if you come on Twitch, you can ask your questions directly uh, in this way. Uh, that's all cool. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Alex. And uh, I really look forward to... Uh, my voice is starting to break again. Uh, to play oh, no. 12 Candles with you and run uh, some Brindlewood Bay also because my, my next project is yeah. called in Brindlewood. Uh, I really look forward to I'm start you. properly writing uh, this one. But first, I need to run more Brindlewood. All right. <laughs> you, yeah, include me. <laughs> yeah, we'll do for sure. Thank you so much. And uh, are you part of the Magpie uh, game mastering thing or are you just joining games uh, on a regular basis? No, I'm a I'm a, an official Magpie GM um, through their curated play program. So oh, if people well, want to play games with me, yeah, like yeah, they can people play. People should find you there. Then I will include the link towards yeah, that yeah. as well. Awesome, awesome. I would check if the the time zones work, but I need to to join one of those curated games uh, by Magpie uh, as well. Anyway, oh, yeah, play. No good. Play with B. <laughs> play with B. They're cool. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. Uh, thanks, people, for watching. And uh, see you around. Bye. Uh, our next guest will be will be Federico Sons, uh, who uh, uh, is an, a designer from Argentina, but would lived close to us in London for quite a while. Uh, released Nibiru and recently successfully funded Xanadu, the first expansion to Nibiru. And uh, Federico, since uh, then moved to Japan, so uh, he will be with us from Tokyo, so it might be interesting to find out what he discovered in terms of tabletop over there. So yeah, thanks, bye. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, bye.